G'day guys, Cam here from The Fish Room, and today we're going to be talking about aquarium maintenance. Fun times! Okay, so why do we do maintenance? In my mind, there is two reasons we do it, and both are really good. The first one is, we've got living animals in our water. We want to keep our water as pristine as possible for the animals that we've got going in it. To me, the key to fish keeping is keeping water. If you keep your water good, your fish are going to go with it. So please, if you're going to take anything from this video, please take your keeping water, not your keeping fish. The better the water is, generally speaking, the better your fish are going to be. The second reason we do maintenance is because we want to look at a nice clean fish tank for the best part. We don't want to hear a filter making weird noises or not working. We don't want to see green algae all over everything. We don't want to see bits of debris floating around the tank and stuff like that. So we're doing maintenance for our own visual reasons as well. Again, this is a great hobby. We want to be able to enjoy it. And part of enjoying it is visually seeing stuff that you enjoy. So with that being said, let's get on to doing our maintenance. Okay, because this tank is quite low to the ground, we've got to do the old suck the hose method because the siphon doesn't work very well and the vacuum doesn't work very well so I start by drawing a little bit of water out of the tank I just want to lower the water level somewhat um, and I want to do this because I want to get the algae scraper in there and if your tank is too high you can splash water everywhere as well so I don't need too much water to come out of this just enough so it doesn't make too much of an issue when you're using your algae scraper remember your hose holds water so give it a wee shake out as well. Okay, so I've got my trusty flipper. Get her on. These are pretty good. Give it a clean up. It's not doing so well against the green spot algae, but anything else on the front is going. The reason I've got green spot algae on this aquarium is because it gets natural sunlight all day long. So if you remember back to the video I did about setting up an aquarium, I said don't put it in natural sunlight because you'll get algae issues. It's exactly what I've done and it's exactly what I'm getting. So I'm now paying for it. But as you can see, dropping the water level means the water doesn't splash out everywhere. So I've given it a good scrape. I'll leave it there for now and I'll do some more water, take some more water out. So generally speaking, I'm looking at taking 30 to 50% of the water out of the aquarium each time I do a water change. Uh, as long as you let the aquarium sort of tell you when to do it, there's no real hard and fast rule of how often you should do maintenance. I always try and encourage weekly, because if you happen to forget one week and you go to fortnightly, it's not such a big deal. But if you're doing it fortnightly and you forget another week, it's three weeks, or maybe you do it the fortnight after, it becomes a month, and then you nitrite. So your nitrate quite often begins to scream upwards and you don't really want that. So I try and encourage weekly but all aquariums are different so let your aquarium tell you when it's ready for you to do your water change. But for me, I am for weekly. Again, like I said before, the key to keeping aquariums is keeping water, not keeping fish. So the more water change you're doing, generally speaking, the better. So I've taken a couple of buckets of water out, now it's time to clean out the filter. Alright, so the way that we clean our filter is we do it in a, in a bucket of aquarium water. I always use aquarium water, um, just basically because all the chlorine and stuff like that in your tank, uh, sorry, from your tap water, couldn't do damage to your biological bacteria, which isn't a good thing, obviously. So what we do, give it a good squeeze out, and it's clean. So there's a dirty one again. Squeeze it out. And it's done. Little tip, this water here is absolutely fantastic on your garden. Citrus loves it and fruit trees love it as well. So tip your bucket of filthy, dirty filter water onto your garden and you'll see decent growth in absolutely no time. Alright, so the filter is being cleaned out and as you can see, we're absolutely humming again. So it's going full bore. So that job is done. So now we have cleaned the inside of the aquarium. We've begun taking some water out of the aquarium. We've cleaned up the filter. Uh, next, we need to replace the water. 
All right, so we've taken the water out, we've cleaned the inside of the glass, and we've cleaned the filter now. So now it's time to put our water conditioner in. This aquarium is about 100 liters, so roughly 25 gallons if my maths is correct. So we're gonna use about two and a half mils of Prime to do that. Easiest way of doing it is again with a 99 cent syringe that you get from a chemist or a pharmacy, and just draw it out to what you need it to and then squirt it straight in the tank. There's two methods for adding your water conditioner if you're putting uh, water back into your tank via a bucket put it in the bucket and then put it into the aquarium or if you're going to use the hose which I'm going to do you just basically treat your whole aquarium uh, generally speaking I always treat my aquariums as opposed to treating a bucket anyway I just prefer to do it that way if you're treating your aquarium treat for the full volume of your aquarium if you're treating the bucket treat per bucket volume that simple right let's fill it up so like I said get your syringe It's about three and a half mil, no, about two and a half mil. So easy, you can even do it one handed. I normally just put it in just in front of the, the water flow so it pushes it around, and that's that. You've now treated your aquarium water for the fresh water coming in. All right, so we're filling up. Um, I'm using the pure hose method. Uh, basically, put the hose in turn it on and away you go. I like to hold my hand over it a little bit so it disperses the water a bit better. Other options would be obviously to use a bucket and if you're using a bucket you can use either cold water or warm water or basically a mixture of the lot. I've always been a basically straight cold user. Um, I've never had any issues going cold. It doesn't really tend to drop the temperature of the aquarium too much so cold tends to be the way that I use the method that I use the most. Uh, doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's wrong, it's just what I prefer to use myself. Right, so here's another quick tip for you guys. Sometimes your algae scraper doesn't quite get the green spot algae off the glass. I know I've already done a video before which we're going to link up there regarding how you can use your filter wool to get the green spot algae off, which works really well. But another good tip is an old plastic card. Just chuck it on the inside of your tank and give it a good scrape. You get a little bit more use with your fingers at the same time, get a little bit deeper in, and that works incredibly well as well if your algae magnet isn't quite hitting the spot. It also works really well on perspex as well as glass. Alright so water is back in the tank, next thing we do is we get a bit of glass cleaner, fire it away, get a scrunched up bit of newspaper and give it a clean up. Um, I know there is aquarium glass cleaner available and API makes some, I think it's probably other brands that do as well. I haven't used it so I can't say whether or not it is good or not. I just use standard run-of-the-mill home glass cleaner um, or sometimes I have the industrial strength mirror cleaner if I've got some of that around. But give it a quick hoon off with paper towel and we're away laughing. So that was really quick and easy. It took me about 20 minutes in total to do it. Um, and most of that was mucking around, making sure I got all my shots in the right position and place and stuff like that. Once you start doing it a few times, you can probably cut an aquarium like that down to 10 minutes. So when you really think about how much work goes into keeping pet fish, compared to say a pet dog for example, where you've got to clean up after it, feed it, walk it, water it, brush it, I don't know, flea it, I don't have a dog so I don't know. Um, you're looking at a lot more time than what it takes to actually have an aquarium at home. You're looking at maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes worth of work on a small aquarium each week, which is absolutely nothing compared to other animals. So keeping an aquarium is really good if you are a little bit time restrained in your life. Uh, it doesn't take very much time to actually hold one, keep one, and have one going once they're established and once they're set up. Alright guys, thank you very much for joining us. If you've liked what we've done today, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, share the video or share any of our other videos, um, like the video and all the other jazz that you meant to do on the social media stuff. Alright, I've been Cam, have a good one, catch you later, happy fish keeping. <laughs>